Alrighty, so it's time for the last talk of the day, uh, and so we've already heard about uh, uh, like uh, Nixos at scale and uh, deploying to large physics things and, and God knows what. Uh, but uh, Samuel is actually going to talk about uh, uh, Nix at home, uh, configuring uh, uh, Nix for your laptop. Um, and uh, yeah, let's start. Hello, everyone. I'm Samuel Leathers. I work um, at IOHK. Um, I'm a senior DevOps engineer there. And I will be talking about Nix at Home configuration management for your house. Or I like to subtitle it, how I use enterprise level tools to have sanity at home. Um, credit where credit is due. Uh, Graham Christensen and um, Clever helped me out a lot with getting this in the state it is now. Um, so thank you very much for all your help over the last couple years getting this repo where it is. Um, so why Nix is great for home devices? Most of us don't have dedicated test networks to test changes out. Breakage is scary with anything else. With Nix, just roll back. And it's free and easy CI to notify you when things break before you deploy. Um, so types of configuration management with Nix. This is, uh, how many of you actually use Nix at home? Almost everyone, okay. So you probably all know all this stuff, so I'll run through it pretty quickly. But on a laptop, you have a few options. Um, you can do NixOS rebuild switch um, from a Git repo clone to Etsy NixOS and then just manage all your stuff using Git. That's nice, but what if you have two laptops and you want to share stuff between those? Um, you can do uh, NixOps deploy from a Git repository uh, cloned anywhere. So you can clone it in your home directory and do NixOps deploy to your local host or to other servers in your house. Um, but you still run into the state issue that was mentioned earlier um, with uh, NixOps where you can only do it from one machine. Um, at home, that's usually not too big of a problem though. And then uh, what if you have OSX machines and you want to remote deploy those because who wants to actually log into an OSX machine and run Nix Darwin Rebuild? Not me. Um, so, and then um, what if you have other Linux systems that are not Nix OS, but you really want to run something consistently using NixOS on it. Um, so like if you want to run a Prometheus node exporter on CentOS, um, but you don't really want to have to deal with the hassle of updating yum packages and everything. So all those things we're going to be talking about here today. Um, so for laptops managed locally, uh, we want to share some configuration. We want some stuff specific per laptop, and we want to be able to rebuild a laptop quickly or spin up a new one. And we usually have bleeding edge software here. Some of you might not. I usually run NixOS Unstable on my laptop. We have some custom commits cherry picked uh, that are not on my, not in yet, sometimes from pull requests or something. Um, and we want to easily test different channels um, at the same time. So here's how I kind of do it. Um, Etsy NixOS, that's where all your configurations go. That's just a, is it not going? Oh no. There, now we're going. Okay, so how I do it, um, Etsy NixOS is a clone of um, my network repo on my GitHub repository. Uh, these slides will be shared later if you want to look at that. There's plenty of good stuff in there and I'm open to any questions later about it. Um, for configuration.nix, I actually do a symlink to machine slash hostname.nix so I can have the same uh, Git repository cloned to multiple hosts that have different configurations and hardware configurations, I do the same thing. It's a symlink to hardware-configuration slash hostname.nix. Um, 
If I want to share stuff between modules, um, I have a modules directory that contains profiles, roles, and custom services. I'll talk more about that a little later. Um, I include it with custom modules equals import modules module list.nix. And then custom modules is added to the imports attribute in the configuration.nix file. After defining a profile, I can just do profiles.vim.enable equals true, and now I have my special vim configuration that I want on all my systems. Um, uh, for public shared content, um, I just create a Nix file called shared.nix that just has uh, content in it, so it's just a huge attribute set. So I put things like my home CA certificate there and my public SSH keys, something that I don't care being in the um, internet uh, where everyone can see it, um, but it's still something I want to split across multiple th things. Um, but what about the secret stuff, like the passwords you don't want everyone to know? Um, so I create, uh, it, in, I cr in git ignore, I create a secrets.nix file uh, in the same format as shared.nix. And then I add a layer of misdirection uh, for CI using uh, load-secrets.nix, which just does a built-ins path exists, secrets.nix, then import it. Otherwise, use this other attribute set that basically usually defines empty strings for everything, so Hydra continues to work. Um, for uh, home deployments, so like I have a server and my main router at home both run NixOS. Um, so that's easy, I just use NixOps deploy for that. I have an infrastructure.nix file that lists all my infrastructure files, and you'll see that right here. And then I can use the same uh, secrets type stuff there, as well as the shared stuff and the custom modules that I use on my laptop. So now all that stuff is shared across all my systems. So if I change it in one place, it can affect everything, which is great when you add a new Vim plugin and you don't want to have to SSH into all your servers and install it again. Um, so uh, this is just a general NixOps config here with the network and the name of the server and the deployment. Uh, this is the none type, uh, so there's no automatically creating it because it's a physical thing at home. Um, and then I can add deployment keys in for secrets that I don't want to be living on the server after a reboot, so it has to be deployed again. Um, to create the deployment, uh, we use the nixops create command, um, and you can basically give the deployment a name, and then you uh, can specify, I pinned the nixpkgs version um, to a specific version. That one, I believe, it was the tip of uh, 1809 um, when I created the slide deck here. But basically, you can specify dash i nixpkg is equals, and then the path to the tarball on GitHub, and then that will pin it. So you have to run nixops modify then, uh, which is shown just below that, to update it to a new version later. And then you just do nixops deploy home. That's simple enough. Deploy dash d home. Um, and then for remote OSX deployments, I don't use OSX very often. Even though this is a Mac, it's running NixOS like 99.999% of the time. Um, I do have another laptop at home that's a MacBook Air that's just thrown in the closet somewhere that I don't want to climb over everything to get to. Um, or I don't really want to VNC into it either or, or SSH and manually run stuff. So Nix Darwin is great for giving you the same configuration management on Linux on Mac OS. Um, so a buddy of mine at IOHK, Rodney, uh, he's not here today, but he created a really cool tool uh, for us there that basically prepares a system using Haskell, installing Nix, installing Nix Darwin and everything, and then runs deployments remotely using Turtle SSH. And um, I did some improvements to that. Um, I won't go into the code here as this talk isn't about Haskell but Nix. Um, so remote OSX deployments, the premise is to build two tools, one called prepare and one called deploy. These two tools remotely SSH into the host and handle the Nix Darwin stuff. Uh, prepare installs Nix in multi-user and deploys, uh, deploy deploys new changes. Uh, a caveat here is Nix Darwin and Nix OS modules don't always have the same design, so some breakage may occur if you share configuration. Um, 
code is in Nix Darwin tools in my repo. The prepare script is slightly outdated. If you want to do this, I highly recommend looking at the IOHK version of this stuff, even though it has a few IOHK specific things in there. Um, it actually installs with uh, multi-user now with prepare. I haven't updated that in my repo because I haven't ran repair since the default change to using single user on OSX again. Um, and it requires an OSX build slave to build the tool. Uh, running prepare will nuke all traces of Nix from the remote system, so don't do this on a system that you've like very carefully crafted your pet on. And uh, for deployments, you just do Nix build a tools, and then you can run result bin prepare mac, and then the IP address of it, and then result bin deploy rule uh, uh, role, and then the role is just a Nix file that's like a configuration .nix file that you'd have on your um, Darwin system, and um, yeah, and then you can use the same modules you're using for Nix OS as long as you write them in a way that they work on both uh, Darwin and Linux. Uh, for Linux deployments, uh, this is kind of cool, but I kind of abandon it because everything runs Nix OS now at home, so I don't have much use for it anymore. But I wanted to share this anyways because I'm sure there's a lot of people here that might benefit from it. The initial premise was to set up a Prometheus node exporter running on non-Nix OS Linux systems like CentOS 7. And um, to do this, I basically, it looks like a normal Nix OS configuration that you'd run Nix OS rebuild on. Uh, but you do an import of Nix PKG's Nix OS and then all, it only supports services. So it only does systemd services, it doesn't do users. This is probably good as it would probably break other things on the system if you started trying to mess with Etsy password and whatnot on a system that's being managed some other way. Um, and then you just specify your services out and then there's this uh, recursive attribute set that does uh, some build ENV stuff and uh, maps the paths to it and it literally dumps out a um, so you can then um, nix build that on the system, and if you do find dot slash result, you'll see everything in there. All you're gonna see are service files. Um, and then nix env p uh, specify uh, where your user root is for it. So in this case, I have uh, user root CentOS monitor, and then I specify the file I want to uh, install there and I specify that I want to grab the all units attribute here, and then I just symlink that to Etsy systemd system CentOS monitor, do systemctl daemon reload systemctl start Prometheus node exporter, and I now have Prometheus node being managed with Nix code that could be automated further using Haskell to like write a tool or Python fabric or any other automation tool that uses SSH to make this a simple process very similar to how the next Darwin stuff above was done. Um, this works. I tested it before I wiped my last non-Nix OS system. Uh, new runs of Nix ENV create a new generation, so you can roll back with this too, which is pretty cool. Uh, you really just need the Prometheus node exporter, but I included other services so you could see that it's scalable and run multiple services this way. Um, to use in production, like I said, I'd recommend using some other deployment tool rather than just manually SSHing in and running Nix ENV. That's never a good idea. Um, so the custom modules, profiles, and roles I said I was gonna touch back on later. I first used the profiles and roles design pattern with Puppet in a previous job. If anyone's used Puppet, they've probably heard about the profiles and roles design pattern. Um, when used properly, each system should only have one role, and a role should only define profiles. My repo does not follow this at all. The initial code came from a repo by Offline Hacker, uh, but it's pretty different from his original implementation. In essence, both profiles and roles are just NixOS modules with a different prefix. I don't use roles a lot at all. In my repo, I have a base role that doesn't have an enable option for things I want on any system, but that's pretty much all I use roles for. Profiles are glue around NixOS configuration. So for example, something like profiles vim enable equals true abstracts away lots of vim configuration setup. And most profiles uh, have an enable option. If you don't have one, it's gonna be on all your systems, which is probably not what you want. 
Um, and my goal here is to clean up all the stuff in my legacy in nixconfigs directory, which is kind of a mess, and have just like the bare minimum in nixconfigs, and everything else is just uh, profiles, but I just haven't had time to play with it yet. Um, and these can be shared across all Linux OS X systems, so you might have to do some conditional things based on how Nix Darwin does something and Nix OS does something. And then most importantly, we need CI to test everything. So Hydra to test everything. I define a uh, Nix OS funk stable, a uh, Nix OS funk unstable, and a Nix Darwin funk uh, unstable that point to these that are defined in Hydra. Um, if you want to see how they're defined in Hydra, you can look at my uh, Hydra configs repo um, under the same username on GitHub. Um, and then Nix Darwin tools is what I told you about with the tools to actually deploy. And uh, so those are all tested as well. So when they break from some uh, LTS upgrade and latest Nix, I know about it. And this will actually test with every single commit that hits uh, NixOS Unstable for Sarav and um, uh, the Mac one for all the unstable commits and uh, for my servers, Optina and Portal. Um, it will hit 18.09. Any commits that hit it, it will rerun and make sure everything's going. So I know as soon as uh, something upstream breaks something that I did that I need to fix. Um, and some other cool features about my network repo that um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail here, but uh, I have full iPixie network booting, uh, thanks to Clever. He really helped me with that one. I have full IPv6 compatibility on my router. My router is fully running NixOS, and I have WireGuard VPN tunnels, open VPN tunnels, Prometheus mar monitoring, and I had an elk stack for central logging, but I disabled it because of lack of resources on my server and just like running out of memory and disk space. And it was like, I don't need to keep all my logs anymore. Um, that is pretty much my talk here. Um, I can jump in. I see we're at about 16. Well, no, we're not at 16 minutes because we refreshed this. So I don't remember how far in we are. Um, OK, so uh, we can jump in here, and I can walk you through some of the stuff I've done in my repo that requires me to mirror this, though. No, I had a different plan. That's right. We are going to move seven. attached to the same TMUX session. That's not good. Um, let's just exit this one and try a TMUX attach. There we go. Typing one-handed and holding a microphone is very difficult. Let's look at the uh, router config a bit here, because this might be interesting to some people that want to um, pull that slide over, Annie. There we go. That might be uh, interesting to some people that want to run a router at home. So we can look at that. Um, and the default.nix, I basically define some internal interfaces. Um, these are VLANs on uh, this interface here, um, and then I have some WireGuard stuff, and those are my VPNs. Uh, one of the cool things here is um, the iPixie stuff I mentioned, and this basically um, 
creates a TFTP root that IPixie can boot um, and builds a NixOS module, uh, NixOS system that basically can be booted over the network. Um, and then I define interfaces here for the firewall. A lot of this stuff came from Graham. Um, I have some cool extra commands here for like drop port, no log, um, accept port on interface, forward port to host. Um, and then I can basically just map across ports. And then yeah, WireGuard interfaces, those are public keys, so don't worry about it. Um, does anyone have any specific questions about this? So your router boots from the network? My router does not boot from the network. <laughs> Um, my router is running a TFTP server, so I can boot any uh, laptop over the network. Uh, so uh, it's very useful for installing Nixon things. I've been playing with trying to get Raspberry Pi um, to network boot as well, but that's a little more difficult because uh, you have to um, actually disable some GPIO pins. Michael can tell you more about it later if you're interested. Uh, he was showing me some of it. Um, but yeah, my router does uh, not network boot. It's, it has a solid state hard drive in it and it uh, has monitoring on it and all that good stuff. Any other questions? Well, I guess we can all go uh, Drink beer then. <laughs> <laughs>